Hey guys, Ega here. A little while ago I showed you my pair of 3D printed headphones from Bluebee. And today we're taking things up a notch with a special edition featuring transparent resin prints courtesy of JLC 3DP. As a quick recap for those of you who haven't seen my previous video, the Bluebee headphones are a pair of open source planar magnetic headphones with an entirely 3D printed housing. The only non 3D printed parts are the driver flex boards, magnets, foam and screws. They also come with their own amplifier board that handles a much needed EQ step that tames their wild frequency response. Last time I modified the original 3D models so that I could use heat set threaded inserts in place of the stock plastic self tapping screws for a much neater assembly. I also printed an improved magnet holder mod that reveals the magnets from the outside and even makes the headphones a tiny bit louder. Still, I felt I wasn't quite done with my pair of Bluebee headphones just yet, so I partnered up with JLC's 3D printing service in order to make transparent resin prints for the driver assemblies. The biggest challenge with this idea was finding a way to mount all the driver assembly parts together. Heat set threaded inserts like the ones I used before don't really work with resin prints unless you use glue. Self tapping plastic screws like the original parts have could have worked, but resin is super tough and even with properly sized guide holes it would have gotten pretty messy. So I figured this was a perfect opportunity to test the limits of resin 3D printing. I decided to modify the existing designs yet again, only this time I added M3 threaded holes directly to the driver backs. And I also resized all the holes on the two driver rings to accommodate the larger M3 countersunk head screws. I was confident that the resolution needed to print such fine detail was there, but I had my reservations about the final fit due to the tolerances involved. Still, it was worth a shot. Transparent resin prints always look absolutely stunning in real life and not only that, they have a nice weight to them, in fact you could very easily mistake them for glass. Looking in from the outside, you can actually see the M3 threads inside the holes. The detail possible with SLA printing is absolutely incredible and getting this kind of fine detail with FDM printers would be nearly impossible. The slightly translucent bits you see here are just areas that were too small to properly coat during the oil spraying step which is the post-processing step that turns resin prints from translucent to fully transparent. It's a tiny detail that's barely noticeable unless you're really looking out for it and I'm totally fine with that. In addition to the driver assemblies, I made transparent prints for the resonator pieces that snap into the center of the ear cups. If you look at a normal FDM print of these parts, you'd be forgiven to think that they mostly serve a decorative purpose. However, the transparent prints reveal their hidden complexity, an array of resonance chambers that go around in a circular pattern. Here too, you can see the limitations of the oil spraying step. The resonance chambers only have a tiny opening to the outside, which makes it really hard for the coat to reach the inner walls, so those areas remain translucent instead of transparent. Honestly, I think it makes for a cool effect and it actually makes those inner chambers pop even more. Before assembling the headphones with the new printed parts, I had to check if the printed M3 threads in the driver backs worked as intended. And unfortunately, they didn't. While they certainly look great, the holes ended up being too tight for the screws to thread in without using a ton of force. So before any actual assembly, I used an M3 screw to loosen up every single one of the 32 holes on the two driver backs. Basically, I ended up with glorified pilot holes. Definitely not as elegant of a solution as I had hoped, but it was good enough to get the job done. Actual assembly though is fairly straightforward. If you're starting from scratch, you should follow the official assembly guide over on GitHub, which I'll have linked down in the description. What I'm doing here assumes you already have a pair of working Ploopy headphones. I used the assembly jig from my original kit to position the foam and driver board onto the driver housing. If instead you have a pair of pre-assembled headphones, you will need to also print one of these jigs. Unfortunately, I couldn't find the model available for download. I definitely think Ploopy should make it available on GitHub as it's practically mandatory for anyone looking to change up the look of their pair of headphones. The next step is adding the inner ring. I had to be extra careful here to not over torque the screws and risk stripping the threaded holes. Loosening up all the screws beforehand was a good idea as the inner ring needs to be held down until all the screws are fully tightened. With the inner ring now holding the foam with the driver flex board, we can remove the assembly jig and inspect the driver alignment from the other side. The headphone drivers will take on the predominantly pink color of the foam interface that the driver flex boards are glued onto. I would have really liked to go for a different look here and I actually have some ideas for replacing the pink foam with something else. But for that I'll need a new set of driver flex boards as I don't feel comfortable sacrificing my only working pair. The outer ring is the last part of the driver assemblies and it gets secured with even more M3 screws. 
Again, I have to be very careful here not to strip out the threads. Maybe using my ratcheting screwdriver isn't the best idea, but I'm being impatient. Once that's done, I'm ready to add the magnet array. For the holders, I'm using the modded version by Cab404 again, but since the magnets will be visible from the outside anyway, I'm using the closed back version of the holders. The resin prints were a bit tight, but I had no issue getting the magnets in, following the same alignment procedure as for the stock assembly. The holders get secured to the driver backs with four M3 screws, and again, I'm being very careful here not to over tighten them. The ear cup rings as well as the headband are printed out of PETG carbon fiber, the same parts I used on my red and black version of the Ploopy headphones, and I think they work really well here as well. With the ear cups attached to the driver assemblies, the headphones are pretty much ready to go, just need to attach them to the headband. Here I ran into an unexpected issue, the holes for the metal dowel pins were too small. There was no way that these were going in without using excessive force, so I decided to 3D print slightly smaller ones instead. I think these are definitely my tiniest 3D prints to date. They looked absolutely ridiculous inside my 350mm cubed Voron 2.4 printer. The only challenge with these was getting them in without them snapping along the layer lines. Once in, however, they are plenty strong and allow the drivers to sway freely, just like the original metal ones. Still, for anyone who will want to go for transparent prints in the future, I made tweaks to the whole size and I'll have links to the modified files in the video description. So with the headphones reassembled, how do they sound? Well, the much heavier resin parts no doubt impact the sound profile of the headphones, and without measuring equipment, I can only give you my subjective experience. I listened to the entirety of Mogwai's new album, The Bad Fire, and I was more than pleasantly surprised, they sounded warm and not at all fatiguing. I went back to listen to my test playlist from the original video as a sanity check, and indeed the sound profile has definitely changed, and I would say for the better. Maybe it's just a case of listening with my eyes more than with my ears, and I'm certainly open to that possibility. The transparent drivers make the headphones feel quite a bit more premium, and the added weight certainly adds to that feeling. Visually, I think that the pink foam is the only discordant element here. A version with black foam instead would be the ultimate look for these, but that's stuff to explore in a future update. All this aside, the headphones still suffer from being a bit too quiet, and sometimes they can feel a bit off on vocal heavy or acoustic tracks. I find that they shine more for instrumental heavy music and with some tweaking to their low end by using the Ploopy toolbox, they can deliver crazy amounts of bass, making them very fun for electronic music as well. I maintain my position that for DIY headphones, they are absolutely incredible, all made possible by the two Canadian wizards over at Ploopy. If you want to hear more about my thoughts and impressions, I recommend checking out my old video, there should be a link somewhere on screen that will take you directly to it. That's going to be all for today, thanks a ton for watching, and if you made it all the way to the end but still haven't subscribed yet, then you probably should do it now, otherwise it's a bit awkward. I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye for now.